this weather. All right, Al, Thank thanks you. a lot. Buying a new car is a big deal, of course, and can be costly and pretty intimidating at times. Yeah, so if you're in the market for an eco-friendly car or a carpool comfort ride, Parents Magazine and Edmunds.com teamed up to pick their top choices for the 10 best family cars of 2014. And Dana Ponce is with the Parents Magazine, and Phil Reed is with Edmunds.com. Good morning to you guys. Good, Good to morning. have you here. Good to see you. Um, first question, there's some news this morning that credit might be loosening a little bit. Does that make this a good time to buy a car? Well, this is a really good time to buy a car, and that means that a lot of consumers are going to have a lot more opportunities to get a low interest rate, which is one of the keys to keeping the costs down on buying a car. But an mm -hmm. important thing to know is that the captive auto uh, finance companies are usually the places that can give the best rates on financing all the way down to zero. You can't do any better than that. Right, let's start with um, getting started. And I know it can be an overwhelming process, Dana, for a lot of people going into the lot. They don't really know what they want. So how do you get started? What you, are the things you, you don't ask even for? want to go to the lot until you've set a budget okay. for your family. And we're recommending no more than 15% of your, you know, your net take home a month. And and for young families especially or if you're expecting another mm -hmm. child or have a big bill coming, you want to go even lower than that. Then you want to do your research. So look at all the models in the class that might be of interest. Don't zero in on one model too early. Um, and then finally you want to get ready to bargain, right? Yeah, and the key to that is finding out what you should be paying for the car. It's a mm -hmm. little bit like knowing what uh, cards it's in the hand of somebody that you're playing poker with. Mm -hmm. So if you have good information to base your negotiation on, you'll be a good negotiator. All right, with all that in mind, let's dive into these picks. And we're going to start in the category of hybrid. Who came out on top here? Well, we picked the Toyota Prius. And, you know, when people hear about the Prius, they're thinking fuel economy. Mm -hmm. And it gets 50 miles per gallon combined city and highway. But one of the things that we really liked about this uh, particular model is that it has solar panels on the roof, so it keeps the wow. interior cool without uh, running the battery down. Oh, that's it's also a nice kind option. of roomy on the inside, so you could get the car seats in pretty easily. Oh, that's great. I love the car. All right, finally, our, let's move on over to the wagon pick. And Phil, let's talk first about what classifies a wagon, because a lot of cars seem to sort of fit in that category. Sure. Well, a wagon used to be very, very common, and then they kind of went to crossovers and uh, hatchbacks mm -hmm. and other things. But the wagon has a longer roof line, and then it has a, a larger cargo capacity in the back. And in this particular case, we uh, picked the Subaru Outback, which is kind of the classic wagon look and mm -hmm. shape and feel. Uh, what really makes this one nice is it's great for people that live in the, where it rains and snows a lot because of the all-wheel drive, which comes standard on Subaru. And you like yeah. this better than an SUV or a minivan? Well, we picked an SUV, too. Okay, yeah. good. Okay. All right, well, let's move to the crossover. Yeah. First right. of all, let's define crossover. What are we talking about? Well, crossover about? is a mix of different features. So, okay. so it has some of a wagon and some of a uh, hatchback. And, you know, and, and it's not quite as high mm -hmm. like as an SUV. So it's kind of... You know, in between all those things. And the pick here is the Nissan the, Rogue. Tell us Rogue, about it. Correct. And what's interesting about the Rogue is you have the option of adding a third row of seats. Mm -hmm. So unlike most cars in this class, you can fit seven passengers. Oh, so if you're driving right? carpool, <laughs> yeah, the back row really you probably want the kids in there. But if you're driving carpool, it's it's a good car for that. All right. And Phil, last but not least, the minivan pick. What are yep. we going with here? Well, probably no surprise. It's the Honda Odyssey. Yeah. And the Odyssey has been like a favorite for just years and years, and they keep improving it all the time. Uh, this year they put in um, captain seats in the middle row, and you can actually pull them apart, wider apart, so that the kids don't get in fights. <laughs> yeah. I wish I was in yeah. one of those when I was a kid growing yeah. up. Yeah. Is it true there's a vacuum in this one? The, the Honda Vac. Yes. In fact, yeah. Yes. Wow. In the yeah. Touring Elite model. So it's, okay. it's in that so particular model. That's just to clean up after just your kids? suck up all that stuff that you wow. shouldn't have let them eat in the back seat. <laughs> right. Yeah. And what is, it, what is it about, there are so many minivans, what is it about this Odyssey that keeps coming to the top of the list Well, of course, year? reliability for, mm -hmm. for Honda. But um, really one of the things that defines Honda is the ergonomics, meaning that everything feels like it's in the right place. Mm -hmm. The interior is incredibly refined. There's also a backup camera, which is important for parents, especially with small yeah, children. Yeah. It seems like a lot more car makers are doing that. The backup cameras are the sensors. Yes. Which is a smart thing to look for when you're buying. Well, in fact, on the Rogue, it has a 360-degree camera. So it shows you a picture of the car with everything around it, and it makes it a lot easier to park. Very cool. All right. Well, Dana Points and Philip Reed, thanks so much. Thank Good you. Good information for us. Coming up next, some medical assistants share their success stories on tricks of the trade.